Honey team, we're going to come together and do Chapter 1, Project G. The final project looks like this. So let's get started. Regional Sales 1.3. Step 1 was to download your Excel project. Your grader project should look like this and have ProFit Marietta and Cell 1A. It's asking us to change the theme of our Excel spreadsheet to the retrospect. So let's go ahead and do that. Retrospect, okay. All right, we're gonna go over here to insert, second tab. I'm sorry, <laughs> page layout. On page layout in the themes panel, we'll go to themes. Now, depending on Office, this product was done in Windows 10, Office Pro 2016. Depending on your product and your update, you may not have the retrospect theme. It was also a download possibility when you downloaded your Excel file on your instructions. So you can look in that folder too. Um, mine happens to be on the second row, the third choice. It has kind of autumn fall colors. So we're going to double click that and we won't really notice a change till we start working in the header. It then says widen column A to 80 pixels and column BH to 110 pixels. So we get between column A and B. We hold our mouse and if you'll look right now, we're at a width of 8.63 and pixels is 175. So that pixels width can actually change depending on your font. We weren't asked to change our font, so we're just going to go on to 80 pixels, which seems, there we go. Um, another way to do this is you can right click, go to column width, and then instead of typing in pixels, you can do the 3.6 or the 10.3 or whatever you're asked to do. All right, and column B through um, H, 110 pixels. So I'm gonna click up in the gray part of column B. I'm gonna hold my mouse and drag all the way out to column H. And again, I was up here in the gray part, maybe a different color for you, but up in the column header letters. And that enabled me to go ahead and change to um, highlight them all. And again, that would let you go into column width and change it, but it didn't give us a number like that to change. So we may have to just go ahead and go back to our individual, which seems kind of different, and go to 110 pixels. The mouse, it's not that easy. That was 111. Let's see how we do on the next one. I'm just kind of clicking in between the columns and dragging. And that one's 108. I'm sure you can do this better than me. Now, step three. Merge and center the title across the range A1 to H1. Let's start with that. So I'm going to click on a, cell A1 and I'm going to hold my mouse and drag it all the way to H1. And then I'm going to go back to my home tab. And on my home tab in the alignment panel, I'm going to click merge and center. If you don't have merge and center, you can go into your alignment dialog box right here and and find your merge and center under alignment, okay? So here's merge cells, and here's center, center. We can center from the bottom, and we can center from the top, horizontally and vertically. Okay, I'm gonna save after every step, um, and then apply the title cell style. So we're gonna come over here, still on the home tab, we're gonna come over to styles, and click cell styles, and we're going to pick the title cell style. So right here's titles and headings. We're going to go over to the fifth choice, which happens to be title. 
Merge and Center the Subtitle. So we're going to click cell A2 all the way to cell H2. And then apply Heading 1 Cell Style. We'll go back right into the same Styles panel, into the Home tab. Over here on the Styles panel, we click Cell Styles, and it's adding us, asking us to choose Heading 1. That's the end of Step 3. I'd save again. Step four, select the seven column titles. So now what we're working with is these titles right here. And I would call that cells C, A3 through cell H3, which would make that a little bit more clear than seven column titles. But it's the column titles for our data. Apply center formatting, okay, and we have merge and center, but we can also remember, I talked about this earlier, go into the alignment box, and we can click center horizontally and center vertically in the cell, which will make it look just a little bit nicer. There we go, and you can see how quarter one jumped kind of to the center of the cell. And now apply heading four to all cell styles. Keeping all cells A3 through H3 highlighted, we're going to come over here to Cell Styles and pick Heading 4, which is down here in our Title and Headings. And really, normally, Headings 1, 2, and 3 are used in APA style, but it can make for a nice look. And you can see now in the background that we're starting to get a little bit of our color from that retrospect theme. That's the end of Step 4. Step five, by using the Quick Analyst tool, sum the quarter one sales and then copy the formula for the remaining quarters. So here is our quarter one sales, right? When we highlight cell B4 all the way down to cell B7, we're given the Quick Analyst tool. And it's this small little jump up that you can also get to auto sum here. And if you're on a Mac, you may find that a little bit easier to go to auto sum and the sigma sum. But we're going to come on down here and instead of picking formatting or charts, we're going to go to totals and under totals we can pick sum. Oops, I went one cell too far on that, so I'm going to undo. I'm going to highlight again just cells B4 to B6, then go to my quick analyze tool and click totals and click sum. I do want to show you one more time that I could have done this. I could have also done this over here in auto sum. So you could go to home or the formulas tab and go to auto sum, pick sum, and you would get the quick analyst tool. Now, and it would give you the sum of the column of numbers. I'm going to undo. I'm going to go to my quick analyst tool because that's the request for this task. Make sure I went into totals. Make sure I click sum. Okay, good job. Now, when we click on that sum total, it's kind of hard to see the distance, but the right-hand corner has a little green box, and that little green box is called an autofill handle. Inside this handle is our formula. The sum equals the sum of cell B4 down through B6. What is our calculation? When we grab that autofill handle, we can pull it across our data and replicate the formula. It saves so much time. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to come down here to my green autofill handle and notice how my mouse changes. It goes from a white plus mouse to a black plus mouse which is on its target. I want the black plus mouse. I'm going to drag it all the way across to quarter four or cell E7 and let go, and it will have moved that formula, cell sum of cell B4 to B7, all the way across. And down here in this last quarter, we should have the sum of cell E4 down to E7. Let's see if we do. We can click that cell. We can look up in here in our formula toolbar, our function bar, and sure enough, there is the correct formula for adding that column. Excel assumes you want to move and calculate columns. 
across the data that you have. That's the end of step five. I would save.